name you may never have heard before. Very few people have. But his paintings have brought him millions and millions of dollars in a career that spanned nearly 40 years. They've made their way into museums, galleries, and private collections all over the world. What makes him a story for us is that all his paintings are fakes. And what makes him an unusual forger is that he didn't copy the paintings of great artists, but created new works which he imagined the artist might have painted or which might have gotten lost. Connoisseurs and dealers acknowledge that Beltraki is the most successful art forger of our time, perhaps of all time. Brilliant, not only as a painter, but as a con man of epic proportions. Are you the best forger in the world? Maybe, yeah. In the moment. <laughs> he agreed to meet with us in Cologne recently and took us to a small wooden bridge outside his home. He volunteered to show us how he works. He was forging a Max Ernst, the German surrealist of the early 20th century. Beltrachi was painting on this wooden bridge because Ernst had done much of his work on a wooden floor. What do you think this Max Ernst would be worth? This one? Yeah. Five million dollars, I think. Uh, Five million dollars and you can do it in three days? Yeah, uh, yes, yes, sure, or quicker. Beltrachi estimates he has done 25 Max Ernsts. He's not copying an existing work. He's painting something he thinks Ernst might have done if he'd had the time or felt like it. So you would be doing a Cezanne that Cezanne never painted, but that you thought he might have wanted to paint? Yes, exactly. So in a sense, every Beltrachi painting is an original. He just lied about who painted it. He says he has forged a hundred artists and can do just about anyone. Could you do a Rembrandt? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Could you do a Leonardo? Yeah, yeah, sure. Who couldn't you do? Maybe a Bellini. <laughs> a Bellini is really difficult. He has sold his forgeries, of course, but says he can still see some of them because they're on public display. Have you seen your paintings, your forgeries, hanging in museums? Yeah, all this museum, no. <laughs> I think I'm one of the most exhibition painters in museums in the world. You are one of the most exhibited yeah. painters yeah. in the world. Yeah. It's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. You might have seen his stuff in New York's Metropolitan Museum or in the Hermitage in Lausanne, to name just a couple. You can also see them in the homes of the 1%. Actor Steve Martin bought this one. Beltrachi's forgeries have also made it into art books listing the best paintings of the 20th century and have been sold in many of the world's top auction houses. I've seen Beltraki forgeries on the cover of Christie's catalogs. Yes, yes. That's pretty good, isn't it? It is really good. It is really good. Jeff Taylor teaches arts management at Purchase College. He says, though there is no shortage of gifted forgers, Beltraki holds the title. He has made more money than any other art forger ever. He combined all the nefarious techniques of everybody who came before him and made very important innovations in exactly what is essential. You have called him an evil genius? Yes. So aside from being a very talented painter, he was also a very accomplished con man. Absolutely one of the best. He started making a few bucks in the game when he was quite young, but his career really took off when he married Helen, a perfect co-conspirator, in 1993. You were really the Bonnie and Clyde of the art world, weren't you? Yes, Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, no. You were really Bonnie and Clyde of the uh, art without world. Without weapons, only with pencils. <laughs> but you were a pair, you cord, you did everything together. Yeah. No, everything together, yes, yes. They invented a story that fooled them all. Helen said her grandfather hid his art collection at his country estate in Germany before the war to protect it from the Nazis. When he died, she said, she inherited it. But there was nothing to inherit because there had never been a collection. Every one of the works had been painted by Wolfgang Beltrachi. When I said it's a collection of my grandfather, 
it was okay. It was okay, but it wasn't true. No, it wasn't true, but the others never asked me more. Because it was a good story. Yeah. And you, you were a good actress in telling the Maybe. story. Maybe. <laughs> she and Wolfgang even created fake labels from a real German dealer, which they put on the backs of paintings, staining them with coffee and tea to make them look old. They toured flea markets like this one to find canvases from the right periods. Tell me what we're doing here. Tell me what we're looking for. Yeah, we're for. looking for for painting like that, no? because we need something that's 19, 19, 1910. Mm -hmm. no? See, that's the French one. You can get that completely clean. Yeah, yeah, completely clean. Yeah, yeah. They sent paint pigments to labs to make sure they'd been available at the time the artist had painted. You were really perfectionists, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, sure. And hearing you talk, you were really good criminals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> to back up their story, they found an old box camera like this one, dressed Ellen up to look like her grandmother, hung up some forgeries behind her, and took some bogus photos on pre-war paper. And make it look like an old photograph. He was off and running. He was off and running. Running to luxurious estates they bought in Germany and in France, vineyard included. They gave parties Gatsby would have loved, and they traveled the world in style, by land or by sea. Bonnie and Clyde had taste. This is my, was my boat, yeah. I don't think you're translating correctly. This isn't a boat, it's a yacht. The tracker was riding high and thought he would stay up there forever. He was turning out forgeries like this Max Ernst, which went for seven million dollars. But then in 2010, he got busted by this tube of white paint. The Dutch manufacturer didn't include on the tube that it contained traces of a pigment called titanium white. That form of titanium white wasn't available when Ernst would have painted these works and Beltrachi's high ride was over. So Jamie Martin, one of the world's top forensic art analysts, uses science to help determine whether or not a painting is genuine. We asked him to examine this Beltrachi forgery for us. His fakes are among the best fakes I've seen in my career. Very convincing, very well done. And what you're saying is that basically he got away with it for 40 years because nobody was examining them properly. Nobody was examining them closely enough. He showed us what he does, how he uses a stereo microscope to study every millimeter of a painting's surface and to select and remove samples. You actually take little pieces off of the painting? We take very little pieces. We take only the minimum amount that's required, smaller than the width of the human hair. He uses what called Raman spectroscopy, which can help detect historically inaccurate pigments. That's what cut Beltrachi's career short. He was sentenced to six years in a German prison, his wife Hélène to four. But the chaos they wrought has not been undone. Now galleries and auction houses who vouch for his forgeries have been sued by the collectors who bought them. You have, in fact, You've really upset the art world, haven't you? Yes, sure. And they all hate me, this expert, now. Uh. Do you think the experts are just incompetent or that they are also frauds, that they pretend to know more than they know? No, no. Nearly all experts we have met, we met, they were serious, really serious. The only problem was I was too good for them, yes. No, that was their problem. That's all. And with all the legal problems they now have, many experts are very hesitant to use their expertise. I think they're terrified. I think Beldrocki particularly put them in a very nervous position. Many foundations representing major artists like Andy Warhol, Keith Haring, and Willem de Kooning are refusing to authenticate works brought to them at all. Francis O'Connor is the world's top Jackson Pollock expert. He says he can spot a fake Pollock in a second. But these days, 
is keeping his opinions to himself. What if I were to come to you and say this has been presented to me as a polyp? Someone comes to me uh, about once a week. I just let it go by. Let it go by. In other words, ignore it. I would uh, be very hesitant to give any opinion uh, at that point because um, of the legal situation. Where do I go to see whether my painting is a real Pollock or not? There is nowhere to go. At his trial in 2011, prosecutors said Bill Trotsky had created 36 fakes which were sold for $46 million. But art historians believe, and Beltrachi told us, that there may be more than 300 of his fakes all over the world. German police have uncovered 60 so far, and the numbers keep climbing. Do you think we'll be uncovering fake Beltrachis for years to come? Absolutely. There's going to be many more out there. But one thing we know about fake artworks is, short of having them burned and destroyed, they have a strange way of finding their way back onto the market generation after generation. And no one disputes that they're awfully good, beautiful. This seven million dollar fake Max Ernst is being shipped back to New York. Its owner decided to keep it even after it had been exposed as a fake. He said, it's one of the best Max Ernst he's ever seen. Boltrachi spent a year and a half in this grim penitentiary but is now allowed to spend many days at home where he is launching a new career. Beltrachi is painting again and is signing his works Beltrachi. He needs to get his name out there, which is probably why he agreed to talk to us. He's lost everything and is now facing multiple lawsuits totaling $27 million. Did you ever think that you would wind up in prison? No. At what point did you realize uh-oh, I'm in trouble, this is over. Now, when I was there, in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Not before then? <laughs> Not really, no. Do you think you did anything wrong? Yes, I, I used the wrong titanium white, yeah.